Hello, everyone. I'm glad to welcome you all, uh, all our audience, uh, to this session of the spring part of Mobius. And this session has a bit unusual topic uh, for Dart language. Uh, this topic is the backend. So more exciting it will be. Uh, and the person who will lead us to this journey is Gianfranco Papa. As Gianfranco says about himself, he is a Flutter developer, a child software engineer, CTO and co-founder uh, of Somnia Software, and uh, football fan in the spare time. Hello, Gianfranco. Hi. Hi, how are you? It's nice to be here. Fine, thank you. Hope you too. But I didn't mention the one important fact uh, of uh, the uh, biography of Gianfranco. Uh, he has recently become a GD in Flutter and Dart. So I would like uh, to say, not only from my side, but for sure from all our conference, a congratulations to you uh, on this big milestone in your career and uh, wish you just keep moving on the same direction. Good job. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was it was great. Uh, I think like <clears throat> that, that kind of recognition was great uh, because I, I, I will, I was uh, doing lots of things uh, like uh, specializing in the in this technology, and it, it's great to become a, a GD. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so to not take a lot of time from this interesting speech, I transfer turn to you, and please uh, go ahead, Franco. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, today I'm going to talk about going full stack with Dart. Uh, yeah, um, basically, um, like the fact that we can use Flutter and Dart to build uh, a front end on the back end, uh, because usually, like for me at least, it's more common to see that people use Dart only for for using Flutter. Uh, but it it is a, a really good opportunity to also talk about Dart as a full stack uh, language. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to introduce myself again. Uh, sorry, I had this on the presentation, but yeah, I'm CTO and co-founder of Somnia Software. We are a, an eight, a dev agency specializing in, in Flutter development. And, and yeah, we are 100% uh, specializing in Flutter in Latin America. Uh, I live in Uruguay. Um, it's a country near Argentina and Brazil, in case you don't know it. And, and yeah, I'm a Flutter and Dart GDE. Uh, so I'm also a software engineer. I, I've been speaking a lot on, in Flutter about Flutter uh, in meetups and communities. Uh, that's why I also organizer of the Flutter Montevideo meetup, where where I live in, in Montevideo. It's the capital of Uruguay. That that was a little bit more about me. Uh, but yeah, let's let's go to the agenda of today. So so yeah, basically what we are talking about today is. Uh, what is the motivation to becoming a full stack uh, engineer in using Dart? Or why should we care about full stack apps using only Dart? Then what would be the challenges once we, we know and we want to use Dart as a full stack language? Uh, what is the current state of the art uh, today? So we can yeah, compare also what are the frameworks that are available and hopefully like you will see how you can start with uh, with Dart, in, especially in the backend, right? Uh, we're going to have a brief demo of some of the tools we are presenting today, so you can also see everything in action. And lastly, we will see some conclusions, some next steps, so you can have like, yeah, we can conclude uh, about what we talk, and then we, you can know how to move forward uh, after this presentation. Okay. Uh, and yeah, also at, at the um, at the last part of the presentation, we can answer some questions. So if you have any, uh, we can cover those uh, at the at the end of the of the of the talk. Okay, so let's start with the motivation, right? Because uh, maybe you are someone who is a Flutter developer. Um, even though we, I, I'm not talking only to Flutter developers, um, 
uh, by doing this talk. Uh, I think that the, the majority could be Flutter developers. So one of the motivations will be that when we are creating full stack apps, when we are using Flutter, we have to have a backend, right? Because it's something um, really common in any application that we have to connect the application to the cloud. And one of the things that uh, might be a problem is that we have to use another language. Uh, for example, TypeScript, it's really common that uh, we use Flutter in the front end and in the back end we have to choose, for example, JavaScript because we're using Node.js or maybe we are using Firebase and we have to write some cloud functions in order to do some more customized stuff. And, and yeah, uh, switching between different languages, this context switching can be hard because we are, uh, yeah, on one hand using Dart in the front end and then we have to switch and use another language, even though those languages are uh, almost uh, the syntax is really similar, right? But uh, ultimately, they are different languages, right? So the context switching uh, could be something that we can improve. So we don't have we, we have a single language both in the front end and the back end. Uh, this would be like one of the motivations to to try to think about full stack app start in Dart, but also trying to re reuse the code across the front end and the back end. One of the also uh, other problem that we experience as uh, front-end developers is that as the backend is written in another language, we have to um, reinvent all of the models and rewrite all of the models uh, or other parts of the system because actually we don't, we don't have the same language, right? So uh, in essence, if we are using only Dart, we will be able to reuse lots of the code that is in the backend because it's the same language and we won't have to reuse Sorry, we don't have to rewrite again uh, code, and this is great. Uh, this is something that we are going to see in the, in the demo later, but, but yeah, this is a, a really great point to start thinking about this. Also, what is um, something, maybe another point that we don't think so much is that we will be using the same tooling and we will have the same developer experience by only using the same language, right? Because if we are uh, using Dart, for example, in uh, Flutter, we will be using, I don't know, VS Code, uh, maybe, but we will be using like all of the libraries that are in, in the pub dev. Uh, so, so yeah, if we are using Dart in the backend, we will be using also <clears throat> all of the libraries that we already know by using Flutter because we are using Dart. So this can increase a lot the, the, the whole experience uh, and, and that's a, a great point. <clears throat> and finally, this is, also related to the fact that uh, maybe you are you're a Flutter developer and you don't even know or haven't tried uh, backend. So Dart being a great language uh, could be a really uh, could be a great motivation for you to start thinking about the backend because uh, Dart is, is a language that can be used for the backend. So maybe you don't know even how JavaScript or TypeScript uh, or any other language that can be used for making backend applications. But the only fact that you know Dart uh, can be a great motivation to start th thinking about backends uh, in, in general. Okay, so uh, once we, we know this, what will be the challenges, right? Because uh, maybe we are Flutter developers and we don't know anything about the backend or we relied on backend as a services uh, such, a, such as Firebase or Amplified or even uh, more open source uh, backend as a service, uh, such as Upright or Supabase. And yeah, the challenges that we'll start facing once we decide to go full stack with Dart will be, in, in essence, like we will think about uh, writing the, our own backend. So that will be the first point. So yeah, that will imply to start creating code in the backend, okay? Then we will need to also start thinking about the deployment because in general, if we use backend as a service, this is done for us as well as other other, other services. But uh, if we go for Dart uh, in the backend, we will start uh, thinking about uh, how to deploy that. Uh, one of the things that I highly recommend to also at least have an understanding is Docker uh, that will allow us to contain our, eyes, uh, our applications in, in Dart. Uh, so in order to deploy it to, uh, for example, Cloud Run, there are services that really scale our apps uh, automatically based on the demand. And other, other challenges that I can um, yeah, present today is uh, that we'll be need, needing to define our own database. Uh, 
uh, and in this sense, we will need to I know, select what is the database that really fits for our use case, maybe a relational or a NoSQL database, or even other types of databases like graphs databases. But that will be something that we will start uh, quite challenging because we will need to select the, the most according one and we will we'll need to connect that uh, manually. We're using an ORM, but yeah, we'll have to consider that, okay? And then the caching could be also a challenge in order to increase the performance because yeah, we uh, when we create server apps, <clears throat> typically, typically we need to access to a database, but maybe we can cache information. So we don't have to um, read uh, data uh, from the database uh, on each request uh, that it, we know it's not going to change so often. So this will be another challenge. Of course, the authentication uh, is, and the author authorization is something that any app has. I will need to also see how this is done. And the CI, CD, uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment is something that we could put on top of uh, our backend <clears throat> because it's a really good practice that maybe you are using also in, in Flutter. Uh, it would be nice to have it in, in our backend. Okay, so other uh, considerations when we are dealing about uh, creating our, our own backend, it's really common to start thinking on how will be the communication between uh, Flutter, I mean, I mean the front end and the back, in this case, Flutter and Dart. So, in essence, we have like different protocols to communicate, and it will depend ultimately on your requirements because we could have like a REST communication uh, over HTTP. And that communication will be stateless and will be <clears throat> in one direction. Uh, the front end will be asking data to the backend and we'll have like requests and response. But we can have different kind of protocols based on, on the requirements that we have. Maybe we can include WebSockets or GraphQL uh, that will uh, uh, help us to have a bi-directional communication between the, the client and the, and the server, the front end and the backend. Or we can use gRPC. Uh, and yeah, on top of that, we will need to decide which kind of protocols uh, we are going to use in order to communicate information. It could be JSON or protocol buffers. Uh, so yeah, this is ju just something to consider uh, when you are starting your backend because you can ultimately uh, uh, condition it like what you are choosing for creating your backend, right? It's, it's, a, it's a decision you have to make earlier in the process. But the good thing is that Dart support, support all of these use cases. Uh, and we are going to see a couple of them, not, not everyone, uh, not all of them, but yeah, we are going to see it into them. Okay, so now that we have all of our challenges um, and motivations in place, uh, what will be the state of the art today? So how can I start with Dart in the backend? Okay, so even though there are more tools than the ones that I listed today, uh, some of them are, are deprecated, so that's why I, I, I didn't focus so much on, on them. I listed, uh, in my opinion, uh, the ones that are more most important today. Uh, so I would say that on one hand, we have Shelf, Darfrog, and on the other hand, ser Serverpod. Okay, we are going to talk a little bit more about all of them. Great. So Shelf, um, Shelf is, for me, would be like the, the first uh, thing you need to maybe to know uh, about backend in Dart because uh, it makes it, it easy to create and compose web servers and parts of web servers. Okay, Shelf is uh, a tool that you, it is maintained by the, the Dart team. So it's like, uh, we know that we can rely on, on, on the Dart team on continue improving this tool. And it is, um, it takes an approach of plugin and play in a modular way. So it's really bare bone what Shelf uh, uh, does for you at the beginning of the creation of your server or your backend. And you will need to start plugging and play different libraries in order to start supporting more uh, things such as routing or maybe WebSockets or different things. So uh, in that sense, it can be a tool that is quite low level you know, in a way. Uh, and it doesn't, it, it is not so opinionated. So you will need to start uh, creating your backend Mostly from scratch, you will not get uh, so much things out of the box. 
But in a way, if you're someone that can have um, the, uh, you, you want to design your backend uh, like the way you like, and you want to understand everything that is happening uh, under the hood, um, and you don't want to get so many things, you, you want something lightweight, uh, this could be a really, well, uh, great tool for you in order to start with the backend development. Also, one of the, the things that is really important is the is that there are like a lot of libraries written for shelf in the pub dev ecosystem. So um, not only we have like different libraries uh, written by the Dart team, but also by community that can increase the experience of using shelf in, in the backend. And I think like one of the big points is that PubDev is reading using Shaf. So that's a big thing uh, to decide why to go for Shaf. Then another tool that we have talked about uh, before is Darfrog. So Darfrog is, a, uh, as the documentation says, is a fast minimalistic backend framework for Dart. So this is uh, only a high level of abstraction on top of Shelf. Um, then uh, basically the approach is, okay, shelf is really bare bones, so uh, we can build an abstraction, a higher level of abstraction of, on top of this tool of shelf. And, and basically we can, it, it will be easier for developers to start using shelf. Okay, so you will notice that when we are going to actually see in action Dark Frog, uh, like under a hood, Dark Frog is calling directly to all of the methods that you will be using uh, using Shaft, for example, okay? This tool is uh, made and maintained by the open source team at Very Good Mentors. So this is also important to know who is behind the, the tool so we can like uh, anticipate if this tool is going to be maintained in the future, this is really important. Okay, so lastly, we have server pod. And I think like this is out of the three is the, the the tool that the framework that is like the most complete one. Uh, the documentation says is it is an open source and scalable app server written in Dart for the Flutter community, and this is a full framework for Flutter and Dart. Okay, so the first difference we noticed with the uh, with Shelf and Dartfrog is that this framework is for Flutter and Dart. It's not specifically to build a backend in Dart. Uh, it can be used to only uh, create a backend in Dart, but the, the idea is that you can use this as a whole thing. So you can start creating full tag app with Flutter and Dart, okay? Whereas using Dart Frog or Shelf doesn't uh, really tell you to use Flutter in the front end, although it would be highly recommended, right? But you can use it for other types of front end as well. Uh, so yeah, one of the things that Server has uh, that we were saying is that it has more features out of the box. Um, by doing that, also it needs to be more opinionated because it, it tells you how to do things. So you have less flexibility on how to choose uh, your structure or even your, yeah, how you structure your, 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 your folders or your files. Uh, it relies on code generation. So there is a lot of things done for you, but at the same time, it's like more opinionated. Uh, so yeah, if we uh, kind of compare the, the all of the, the frameworks that we present so far, uh, I, I presented it in this way because uh, if we start with Shelf, then Darfrog, and then and last uh, server pod, we are going to continuously uh, uh, lose uh, more flexibility, in my opinion, because uh, yeah, uh, the tools offers you more, uh, features out of the box for you, but at the same time, uh, yeah, they they start deciding how to do things, and this is great because on one hand you don't have to decide how to do it, but on the other hand, yeah, uh, if if you are someone that uh, needs more flexibility, yeah, uh, you you should uh, compare and choose what whatever suits better for you. Okay, so here we have, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I I have. Um, the next steps will be later, but yeah, we have <clears throat> uh, more information on our server board because yeah, maybe you will be thinking about, okay, but what are the types of um, features that server uh, really puts out of the box for me? And if we compare to server to Darfrog or Shelf, server will 
uh, have files uploads out of the box, so you don't have to care about that. You only need to configure where do you want to save it. Then the authentication in, and data streaming are done for you. Also, it has a strategy to task scheduling, uh, health checks, and easy deployment. So uh, there are a lot of things, a lot of things that you even don't know, maybe when you're starting a backend, that I think it's great that Serverboard has uh, them because, yeah, maybe you are, uh, you are not even aware of these problems, right? And those are really good practices that you need to uh, take in place. So yeah, Serverboard, just to say uh, some last words about the, the framework, um, because in general, it's the most difficult to explain because it has a lot of things uh, comparing to the R2 that I presented. <clears throat> so it recently has reached the version one and it's really stable. Uh, actually, it, it reached the version 1.1 where they make a lot of changes. In particular, uh, one of the things that What's really tricky about server is that it, it was opinionated, so uh, it was more um, one of the yeah uh, things that you need to do to deploy your application. Uh, maybe it was more oriented to AWS deployments and also to some kind of database such as Postgres, a SQL database. And in the recent, in the most recent uh, release they share with, with us that it, it will be easier to uh, deploy your apps, maybe using Cloud Run or another service. So yeah, that's great because in some way they are thinking also about this flexibility of, and not constrain the, the developer to only use the, uh, like a selected kind of, of tools such as AWS or, or maybe Postgres. So yeah, they're increasing their flexibility there and that's great. Okay, so... I think now that we are more in context, uh, we are uh, able to present a demo. We will be presenting what would be a full stack app with Flutter and Shelf slash Darkflow because it's easier to present uh, these kind of tools. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to start sharing uh, VS Code. So perfect. We are going to I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so once you start uh, creating a full stack app, this will be one of the possible structure that you could have in in your yeah in your repository. Maybe you have a mono repo, uh, and you have inside uh, the repository two folders: the client and the server. In here, we have a client app. Then we have a server that is using Darkfrog, and uh, we also have the the other variation of the server that will be using shelf. So we can see like what are the, the difference between using one or the other, okay? So we will start presenting uh, like what is shelf, uh, how, how we can uh, picture basically a, a, a shelf server. And basically when we create a shelf uh, project, uh, it is uh, really easy because it's integrated in Dart itself. So it's, it's a, a template that Dart used to create a project. And uh, maybe you, you didn't create a, a, project using, uh, a project using Dart, but basically whenever you use Dart create, uh, you have the possibility to pass a template. And here, if you select shelf server, you will create mostly like a package, a Dart package, but with some uh, boilerplate code to start creating your own shelf server, okay? Uh, apart from that, we have, for example, uh, the Passpec YAML, uh, if you are a Flutter developer, this is really common for you, where we can put all of the dependencies. <clears throat> and here is uh, what, what I said that on one hand, we can use all of the dependencies that we are uh, used to use in Flutter. So that's really nice. And on the other hand, we will see like different shelf uh, dependencies uh, because as we uh, said earlier, the way you build shelf application is to uh, plug and play different libraries. So you can start supporting different things. For example, in this case, I brought the shelf router so we can define all of our endpoints in a cleaner way. It's not that we, we, we can do it only with shelf, it's that it will provide a, a more uh, code to do this uh, easier. And also if we want to start supporting WebSockets that will be pushing uh, 
or having a bidirectional communication between the, the front end and the, and the back end, we will need to also import the shelf WebSocket library. Okay, so this is uh, really the approach, really lightweight framework. So you can start using only what you need instead of like having a lot of things and you don't use like all of them, right? Okay. Also, we will have a Docker file. And that's why I recommend to also uh, start thinking about or even being aware about what is Docker and why it helps to containerize our application. It has a lot of benefits. And ultimately, we have like our server that Dart really easy. Uh, and here we will have our main method. And if we see it, we only, uh, yeah, uh, the only thing we need to do is to start the server with an uh, IP that we can send it and the port. Maybe we can use the ADA port. And uh, what we are using here is uh, the shelf router. So we can start uh, a pipeline and add in a middleware. And then also we are, uh, and of course, creating the router so we can define what is the, the actual endpoint that we are going to use. As a bad pra practice, it's really useful to have like stash API slash V1 and the name of the resource that we want to access. And then as we are using WebSockets in this case, uh, we are uh, basically listen for new messages. And if we receive any message, we will return <clears throat> with an echo of that message. So it's, this is a really basic um, uh, implementation of WebSockets. So we can see it uh, right now. And yeah, the way we, we can see it, uh, this in action, I will, Start the, the server in, we, we will have to go to the shelf server. So here uh, we only need to run a wrap. So we need to access to the bin folder and the server that does. So here we will notice that the server is already running and listening on port 8080 by default. And if we now go to Postman uh, and we would like to uh, basically use this uh, this method. We will need to put the the base URL plus the the API B1 users in here. And if you didn't know, like Postman also um, uh, kind of like allow you to test your WebSocket endpoint. That's really nice because we can connect here. Uh, we will be connected, and then whenever we pass a message, let's pass our name. Uh, we can send a message and the server will respond with an echo. So really easy. But here we have like, a, yeah, a server that is responding us with uh, a WebSocket communication, okay? So if we go back to our, our example again, uh, what we can do now is start talking about this server written in Darfur. Okay, so basically we're going to close this and this. Uh, whenever we create a project using Darfrog, we will first need to install the CLI, the CLI tool so we can start using uh, Darfrog. Uh, this doesn't come with Dart as well. So, um, but yeah, uh, as we were saying, this is a higher level of abstraction of, on top of Shelf. And there are like uh, other types of decisions that Darfrog has taken for us. So the way we, we work with the ser a server in Darfrog is kind of almost the same uh, as a shelf server because we will have a uh, destructor of a Dart package. So we have the passpec YAML. We have different uh, libraries because, um, for example, uh, Darfrog also takes the same approach of being lightweight and uh, bring your own libraries or the libraries that you need for Darfrog in order to support different use cases, such as WebSocket. So it is the same. We will need to um, install the Dart Pro WebSocket library to start supporting WebSockets. And in this case, we are using libraries such as Equitable or JSON Annotation, uh, just to demonstrate that those are libraries that we know we use in, in Flutter, uh, and we can start using it in the, in the backend as well. But one of the, of the first things that uh, Dart Pro, uh, decide for us is the way the routing system will uh, work for us. So basically, if we want to define a route in Darfrog, we'll need to define also uh, a structure of folders that will resemble the actual endpoint. So if we go back to uh, our server in Shelf, we will see that we have API, B1, users, WS. 
And if we go back to um, Dark Frog, we will need to define this in a structure of folders. So we so the, the, then when Dark Frog compiles the whole thing, it will look on the folders and we'll see, okay, clearly what the developer is, is asking me to do is, okay, to define a, an endpoint that starts with API, B1, and then users. Uh, so yeah, if we go to the index file, here we will be able to see uh, actually uh, like some uh, REST endpoints uh, that will be using HTTP, okay? So in the index file, we will, uh, yeah, uh, start defining what is the HTTP method that is coming. So we will uh, have to implement the onRequest method. And based on the HTTP method that we need to use, in this case, only a get method, because we are kind of uh, basically responding with a, a list of users. Imagine we have here the endpoint of of getting a user list. Uh, so we check if we are receiving the get method. And then if that's the case, we handle that uh, request by accessing a user's data source and getting all of the users and returning it in a JSON uh, way all of, uh, all of the users that we have, for example, in a data source. Uh, and in this data source could be a database, a cache, or even uh, something hard coded. Why not, right? So this is how you start defining your own route, routes in, in Dark Road. Uh, again, you will need to create your index files, uh, define which, met, which HTTP method uh, are you, uh, you are receiving. And then based on that, maybe if it is a get, you will need to do something. Or it is a post or a delete or a put, you will need to do something else. In the case, uh, you want to receive an extra parameter because you are, maybe you are building an endpoint that is uh, getting a user by ID. You will need to have this special notation uh, between brackets. You will need to have like the, the thing that you want to have dynamic. And, and yeah, uh, the method will be the same, just uh, we will be adding a, an ID. So we can use the get method, but we have that ID and we can start retrieving a user by the ID. So yeah, basically, uh, this is how you can start building your own REST APIs. And again, the routes structure folder will map into your endpoints. And yeah, this is uh, an approach that is like more opinionated, uh, but it's really easier for you in order to not, not uh, um, have that diffi uh, so difficult setup where you need to define like uh, in a in a way like all of the URLs that you will be using, all of the routing. So this is can be like quite easier. And if we would like to use the WebSockets, there is a different kind of on-request method for this. In here, what we need to define is like uh, the WebSocket uh, file uh, again. So we can have the slash user slash WBS. And what we can do is in this case, uh, okay, so we will need the WebSocket handler, and then when a new client has connected to our server, maybe what we can do is to subscribe that user to new messages that are happening in the backend. Then we can send the current user's list to that client, because maybe he, at that moment uh, uh, the client also wants to know what is the user list. And then on each uh, message, we will start uh, listening and based on the event that is coming to the server, we will act accordingly. This uh, is maybe it's, it's more difficult to understand because we are all also using a library that is called uh, log, uh, not log, but it's like a variation broadcast log that is help us to manage all of the things that can happen uh, by using web servers, such as handling like uh, users that are subscribing to the server, maybe delivering some messages, change something in the server. Um, so yeah, um, this is one of the cool things that we can do that we can reuse the things that uh, we are um, yeah, used to uh, have in the front end, such as for example, block or the way block it works by dispatching events and producing new states. Uh, and then ultimately when the user is done, we can unsubscribe the user to to the channel because we he uh, will not uh, there is no need to uh, continue uh, 
sending messages to that client because it's not connected anymore, okay? So yeah, this is another way so that we can use, for example, WebSockets uh, using Darkfrog. And other concepts that we have in Darkfrog that we didn't cover is the concept of a middleware. Uh, this will be basically how we can put something in the middle uh, before an actual request happen or even after that it can, it can happen. So in this case, as we can see, we, we provide a user data source to all of our endpoints so, so that our endpoints can access uh, yeah, that data source and they don't care about where that information is coming. In this case, we have an in-memory data source. Uh, so we are using an in-memory user list. So this is only hard-coded for demonstration purposes. But then all of our methods to retrieve users or get user by ID are uh, operating on this list, okay? Okay, so here, another cool point is that we can start defining our user in the in the models of the server. We are using Dart, of course, and we can start reusing these models in the front end. So that's why we, we can export everything and start using in our client app um, by only exporting the user's API, we will have access to all of the models of a user and we don't have to define that information again and parse it and because everything is already defined in the server in here. Okay, so this hopefully like um, see, um, by, by seeing this example, we can hopefully like understand how is the process of creating a full stack having Dart with Dartflow of with uh, Shelf. Uh, also here we have the client app that is basically uh, using Flutter. I'm not going to stop so much in this in this app, but basically what we are using is we are exporting the user's API that will be the, the backend server. And then we have a user repository that mainly uses this user API to stream our users in a, in our, in our app. So we'll be uh, streaming a list of users of users and present it into a screen. If we go to our leaf folder, we only have one single feature that will be our user's uh, feature. And we are mainly displaying everything in a list view. So if we run the app, so we can see this in action, maybe it's more clear if I if I do that. Maybe we can do, uh, we, we can go to the uh, server app. In this case, I mean the dark frog backend and for running the Darfrog backend, what we should do is use the Darfrog uh, CLI and with the command dev, we are going to start the backend using Darfrog. So one, one of the things that we have out of the box is the ability to hold reload the server. This is really great if you start making changes in your server and, and saving it, uh, you don't have to restart the server. It will be automatically done for you. And if we go and get our users by using an HTTP method, like a simple REST API, we can do that. And this is the same list that we have in, on the server hardcoded, remember? Uh, we can also get a user by ID. And this will give us uh, only a particular user. And again, we can also connect via WebSockets to our server, the same way we did with Shelf. So here we have the list of uh, empty users because we are starting a new list. And if we start dispatching different messages, such as adding a user, and we send this message, we will be sent back with the with a new user list, okay? So if we go to our application, uh, to VS Code, we'll uh, see all of the requests that are coming from the server that we already uh, uh, did. And if we go to our client app, uh, let's, try to run this, this application. We'll run the, the Flutter app using Chrome, really easy, and we'll specify the URL as localhost and 8080, that, that will be where the WebSocket channel is uh, created. But this ultimately should be like the, uh, uh, the URL that you're using to deploy your server. And, and yeah, while, while this is starting, uh, what we will see here is that we have the list of uh, users in, in our Chrome app using Flutter. And uh, while we dispatch more uh, events to the server, such as adding a new user, we will see that uh, in, in our app, like updating automatically. So we, we don't have to 
ask the server where is the list again and again. So maybe what we can do here is to present the, the app and maybe we can present it using Postman here. So here we have like the application with the user list. And if we go and dispatch a new add user event, we will see that this application is reacting to the to the to the backend in real time because yeah we are sending uh, another um, it is basically subscribed to the list of the users that are in the backend and as the the list is changing uh, the application knows because it's subscribed so so yeah this will be basically uh, the demo uh, so you can again know more or less what would be the experience of working with a uh, full stack app with only Dart, what would be the advantages. So maybe to wrap up, we can uh, go back to the slides and we can mention some conclusions, okay? So one of the conclusions of today is yeah, to choose your framework carefully. I think that if you're especially starting with Dart, that I consider that uh, there isn't so much information uh, such as other languages in the backend, for example, JavaScript or, I mean, Node.js or even other ones. Uh, you have to really know why you're choosing Chef or Dark Frog or Serverpool. Uh, and also, one of the things will be how much flexibility of customization you want. Uh, I think we already cover uh, these two points and we already know, like, uh, by selecting each tool, what would have the most flexibility, or uh, uh, how can I can I start customizing more the the framework? <clears throat> then, our point is how much or how many out of the both features you want uh, in order to move forward with your development. If this uh, is something that makes sense for you, also. Um, something that I pointed out, I didn't point it out so much, is the fact of comparing Dart or even creating your own backend uh, in comparison to use a backend as a service such as Firebase or, or Amplify, for example. And what are the main advantages of using one or, or the other? Uh, if we are talking about like creating our, our custom backend, you will have full flexibility on how to scale or, or even the cost associated to, to that. So, so that is one of the good points. But I agree that, yeah, um, other tools such as backends as a service provide you more and more out of the world features for you. So that will be things that you can put on the balance when starting creating a full startup. And if we also compare that with other programming languages, I think that, yeah, uh, even though, as I said, Dart, maybe there isn't so much information that, or or success cases as other languages such as Node.js, I think that there is a really good opportunity because Dart has seen almost the same that we've seen in the past with uh, JavaScript when developers already know, already knew uh, JavaScript uh, because of, of creating front-end apps and then Node.js was introduced and they start creating full tag apps using JavaScript. The same with Dart, I think that there is a really great opportunity and especially if you already know like really well Dart because you use Flutter, uh, there's a really good opportunity to, to you to consider uh, all of these benefits that we mentioned earlier. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, I think we, we here we have the next steps. I know what that slide um, uh, was before, but yeah, as next steps, I will highly suggest to see more. Um, uh, deep all of the documentation of the tools that we mentioned, Darfrog, ServerPod, Shelf. I know we didn't have the chance to cover also ServerPod because, especially because it has a lot of features and it will be difficult to explain it like in in the time I had. But yeah, go ahead and, and see the documentation. So also, I wrote a blog comparing all of these tools uh, in the Code Magic blog. And and yeah, in this blog is is uh, I think it's really cool because we. Uh, are able to create a single endpoint in all of these tools, and we um, compare how difficult it is, um, yeah, to to do the same in all of these tools. Uh, so it is a really basic example. It's more or less similar to what I present today, but it recovers more deep and with more time. Like uh, where are all these steps and how we, you can reproduce it in your uh, local environments, and. 
And yeah, also, uh, other thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, recently uh, there was a Google I.O. And in the Google I.O., uh, Google uh, presented a, a game that is, it was called I.O. Flip. And you can go and look uh, the source codes, uh, the source, uh, the code base, because uh, in there they they were using Flutter and Darkfrog, also Firebase in, in some ways, but they were using Darkfrog, and that that is a, like a, a nice example to really see uh, how to build like a, a solid system, like they did a, a game in this case, uh, but it's like more complex than what we uh, did today, of course. And you can really see in action how that is built and how Darfrog manages like more uh, challenging things. Okay, so yeah, that, that will be it. Uh, thank you for for having me here today. Uh, there are there are my social networks in case you, you want to follow me. Uh, there here you will uh, also see the uh, I can I can also send the GitHub link in, in my GitHub of the, of the demo of today. Uh, there are also the Flutter Uruguay uh, networks you, in case you want to see like more content of uh, the meetup I organized or the YouTube channel I had. And yeah, uh, really nice to be here today. Uh, so maybe we can pass to the Q&A section if there is any, right? Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your speech, Gianfranc. It was uh, really interesting. Um, Sure, that's all our audience uh, was uh, exciting. That's uh, information and it will, will be useful for all of them in the future or maybe uh, even now. Thank you. Bye.